Welcome back everyone, happy to see you again for another Unity VR tutorial. So we already learned a lot during the six previous video, but there is still one thing we haven't yet covered that is vital for any game and its user interface. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make and interact with UI in VR. But be careful because next week episode will be uploaded not here, but on Patreon, where we will make a super hot replica from scratch using what we learned throughout this series. So if you want to support the channel, get access to the source code and exclusive content, join us, link in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. So in last video, we made a ray to interact with faraway object. And the good news is that we can use this exact same ray to interact with UI as well. So if the interactor is set up, let's make the interactable, which are in this case, some user interface. To make a UI, we first need to create a canvas. So let's right click UI canvas. Now, as you can see, this has created two game objects, a canvas as we wanted, but also an event system here, which goal will be to manage the interaction with user interface. At the moment, the canvas render mode is set to screen space overlay. This is why it's seen as a giant square in our scene right there. And if we try to add something to it, so let's right click on it, go to UI, as you can see, we have lots of things that we can add like slider, toggle, text, and so on. But if we add a simple slider, it shows now inside this big rectangle canvas. And if we click on play, I can already interact with this slider using my mouse, but we cannot see it or even interact with it in VR as it is set as an overlay. So to fix this, we need to make the UI part of our world. And to do so, let's leave play mode, go to the canvas, and change the render mode from overlay to world space. And now the difference is that we can now move, scale and rotate the canvas. So if I set its scale to 0.001, reset its position to 000, double click on it to move the scene camera in front, we can see it is now at the center of our scene and we can move it anywhere that we want and edit it like a normal object. We can even change the canvas square by pressing on T or clicking here on the rect tools and still be able to edit and add new UI element to this canvas. So for example, let's make a really simple menu. First, I'm going to increase the size of the slider we just made. We can add also another element, for example, a text. For this, let's right click UI. We have two text system available, but I highly encourage you to only use the text mesh pro. So let's say yes, that we want to import it. We can close this window now. And as you can see, this has created a new text that we can edit. Let's write game menu instead. We can change the font size and use the T keyword to edit its rectangle as well. Make it centered in the middle, even bold if you want. Basically edit it like you would with any text editing software. And maybe as another example, let's add a new drop down text mesh pro as well. Finally, to make things more pretty, we could also add a background panel. So let's right click UI panel. We can change its color to black and change the opacity with the alpha value over there. And as you can see, it appears in front of everything now. So to fix this, we can simply place it as the third child of the canvas. Perfect. And just like this, we have a beautiful UI setup for VR. Now let's click on play to see how this looks inside the headset. And there it is, this looks already super cool. As you can see, I can move around the scene and this UI feels part of our scene. But we have still one thing missing. It seems like I cannot interact with the ray with this canvas. So let's learn how to do this. To interact with the UI, let's first select our canvas. And instead of a graphic recaster, we need to add a track device graphic recaster. This will make sure that the ray can hit a graphic element. Then we need to update the traditional event system. So let's select the event system that was added earlier, remove any input module and instead add a XR UI input module. Now let's see if this works by clicking on play. It seems that this works because the UI didn't react to the laser, but we have a super annoying bug caused by our teleportation. When I try to click on the UI with the trigger button, it also triggers the teleportation. So something we can actually do is stop the teleportation from happening when we are hovering something with our ray. 
So let's see how we can do this. To remove the teleportation when we over something, let's go to the activate teleportation ray. We are going now to add a reference to our two ray interactor. So public XR ray interactor left ray and public XR ray interactor right ray. Next in the update function, this set activate is getting a bit too long. So I'm going to create a new boolean called bool is left ray overing and make it equals to left ray dot try get it info now this parameter needs some output parameter so these are parameters that are updated inside this function and that we can use as an output to know in this case the information about the object that was it but in our case we just want to know if it has it something so we can fill anything that we want here let's do out vector 3 left pose out vector 3 left normal out int left number and finally, out bool left valid. And the whole thing will return true if we have it something. And finally, using this, we can deactivate the ray if we are overing with not is left ray overing and the rest. So in conclusion, we are enabling teleportation if we are not overing with the laser, if we are not pressing on the grip button, and if the trigger button is above 0 0.01. Phew. And now do exactly the same, but this time for the right end with a bool called is right ray overing. There you go. Now everything is ready. Let's save our script. Go back to Unity. We can add the XR ray interactor on each one of the ray parameters, of course. There you go. And now if I click on play, it works. We can now super easily interact using the trigger button on our ray. This feels so good, but you might see another annoying bug, which is that we can actually sometimes use the teleportation ray to interact with the UI. So this is actually super easy to fix. We can select both our teleportation ray and here simply uncheck enable interaction with UI game object. Perfect. And there it is, in just a few minutes, we managed to create and interact with UI in VR. Of course, you can use this in any way that you want with all of the UI elements from Unity and trigger any event you need for your game, from changing behavior to audio to switching scene. I also have a tutorial on scene transition in VR using UI, by the way, if that's a topic that you want to learn. But for this tutorial series, and just to give you an example, I'm going to change the turning mode using here the little drop down that we made. So first we can select this drop down in the canvas game object, change the option name one to continuous turn, change the option two to snap turn. And now with this on value change event below, we will be able to hook an event that changed the turning method. So for this, let's go on our game menu and I'm going to add a new component called set turn type. We can remove the start and update right at the top using unity engine.xr.interaction.toolkit. Create a public reference to the action map snap turn provider called snap turn. And same goes for the action base continuous turn provider called continuous turn. Next, we need to create a function that will set the turn type from an integer representing the element that was chosen in the dropdown. So let's do public void set type from index int index. And if the index is equals to zero, this corresponds to continuous. So let's do snap turn dot enable equals false and continuous turn dot enable equals true. Else if the index is equals to one, this corresponds to snap turn now. So let's do the opposite. There you go. Finally, we can save and go back to Unity. Drag in the component, the snap and continuous turn parameter on the XR origin. And the last thing we need to do is actually hook this function to the drop down. So if we select our drop down, click on the plus button on value change, drag our game menu, select set turn type. Here, make sure to use the set type from index above and not below so that it will use the option that the player has clicked on as a parameter. And just like this, if we click on play, we are now able to switch from one turn type to the other using our menu UI. This is awesome. And now a good exercise for you to make sure that you understand this correctly is to use here the slider that was added also earlier for something else like the audio of a game, for example. Now to conclude this tutorial, I want to show you how to turn this UI 
into a menu that we can appear in front of us with the press of a button and that will always look at us. So to make a menu, I'm going to create a new empty game object. We can call it game menu, reset its position. You can even set the canvas as a child of it, just to have a better organized hierarchy. And on this game object, I'm going to create a new component called game menu manager. The goal of this component will be to hide or not the menu game object. So first, we will need a reference to the menu. So public game object menu. Then we need to listen to an action. So let's add at the top using Unity Engine dot input system and create a new parameter of type input action property called show button. Perfect. Now we can check that this button is pressed with if show button dot action dot was pressed this frame and toggle the menu with menu dot set active not menu dot active self. We can now save and go back to Unity. Next, don't forget to drag the canvas into the menu parameter. And for the action, if we go to our action map that we are using and that we can find in the project folder with XRI default action, we can see that there is not really an action made to spawn a menu. So in my case, I'm going to select the left hand interaction, click on the top right corner, plus button, name this action menu, and for the binding, click on it and use the path XR controller, XR controller left, optional control, menu button. There you go. Now we have an action made to spawn the menu. Let's click on save asset and close these windows. Finally, we can add this new action reference in the show button reference of our component. And there you go. Now, if I click on play, as you can see, by pressing on the menu button on the left controller, I can hide or show the menu. This is nice. Now we can already do two things to improve the system. First, it will be better to hide the menu at the start so we can simply select the canvas and uncheck it here to add it. Then we can actually set the position of the menu to always show it in front of the player. This is actually super useful for a menu as the player might move around. So, so to do this, let's go back to our game menu manager script. We are going to need a reference to the player head. So a public transform called head and also a public float called spawn distance that we can already set to two. This value here will say the distance from the head the menu will spawn. Now, if we press on the button, we can do a little bit of math here for the position with menu the transform dot position equals add position plus new vector three add dot forward dot x zero add dot forward dot z. We can normalize with dot normalize and multiply by spawn distance. So what we are doing here is actually take the position of the head and move it in the horizontal direction that the player is looking at here with this new vector 3 using the head.forward vector. If I click on play, as you can see, it works the menu now spawn in front of the player, but is not always looking at the player's head, which is annoying. So we can actually super easily fix that and even update this every frame of the game, not just when we are spawning, with menu.transform.lookat new vector 3 add.position.x, menu.transform.position.y, add.position.z. And now if we save and go back to Unity, as you can see, it works, but the menu is facing on the opposite direction. So we can simply flip its forward axis in the code. So let's do menu.transform.forward multiply equals minus one. And now if we try our game once again, as you can see, it works. We now have a beautiful menu that follow us and is always showing in front and which we can spawn and interact with. This is simply awesome. And there it is guys. This is how to make and interact with UI and use it to make a simple menu. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for sticking till the end. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. And as I said in the intro, next episode will be uploaded exclusively on my Patreon, where we are going to make a super hot replica using what we learn. So if you don't want to miss out and support the channel, join us, link in the description. See you soon. Bye bye.